Food security means having reliable access to healthy food. It's something most of us take for granted in Aotearoa, but with a growing world population and climate change, not just increasing temperature, but bringing more droughts, floods and pests, it's one of the biggest challenges we face in the coming decades. New Zealand produces enough food to feed 40 million people each year. And all around the country, scientists are using genomics to ensure we continue being able to feed the world into the future. Food security is absolutely important. It's the foundation of society and we do know there's some big challenges ahead um, around climate change and around other kind of resource constraints. It's absolutely essential that we figure out how to make the best use of all those resources. The climate crisis is concerning for scientists and should be for everybody really. The crops that we grow currently will be under more stress. While the impact of drought and severe heat on plants is obvious, a number of crops we rely on have more complex mechanisms that will be affected by global warming. Apples and pears, stone fruits like peaches, plums and cherries, and nut trees all need winter chill in order to produce flowers and fruit come spring. A fruiting tree detects cold nights, so it's got a little brain in the bud of the plant and that ticks off the number of hours where it's been really cold. And with the climate crisis, we know that warmer temperatures at night are going to stop that little clock from ticking away and we won't get flowering. Apples are a staple part of our diet and a major New Zealand export. At Plant and Food Research, Andy Allen is using gene editing techniques to unlock the key to keep these trees fruiting despite warmer winters. We've taken apple and figured out some of the genes responsible for detecting chilling in winter. We can go into an advanced cultivar and make changes to those genes so they are more resistant to climate change. But breeding is slow. Climate change is faster than that. Andy Allen's research uses a gene editing technique called CRISPR. It's a new process which allows very precise changes to be made to a cell. CRISPR is really cool. It's an enzyme that goes into the cell and it goes and makes a variant in exactly the place you want it to go to. So if you've got a, a major gene that that's stopping flowering, you can get the CRISPR enzyme to make a variant of that gene or destroy the gene completely, and then the plant will flower more often. The changing climate not only affects the plants we eat, but also those that farmers rely on for livestock. In Palmerston North, these ag research scientists are trying to future-proof that feed. One of the bits of research we're doing right now is looking at drought response in ryegrass. And what we're doing is comparing under a drought scenario and a rain-fed scenario to look at how those plants will actually stand up when they're faced with drought. So they're side by side in the field, but one's got a roof that goes back and forth over the top. So whenever it rains, roof goes on, they stay dry. And what we're already seeing after only one period of uh, drought is that a huge amount of variation amongst the ryegrass plants. Some of them continue to thrive and some of them are already turning up their toes and dying and that reflects the amount of genetic diversity that we have for these traits. For genomic selection, it's important that we can link up the trait information, how the plant's performing in the field, with the molecular fingerprint, the DNA fingerprint. And when we bring those together, you get a model that actually allows you to then go and predict the potential of any of those billions of grasses to figure out which ones are most likely to perform well in a climate adaptation scenario. Having secured the future of our meat and veg, what next? Well, you'll need something to wash it down with, of course. Not to mention the fact New Zealand wine exports contribute $2.5 billion to our economy. Many of the challenges facing the wine industry come from our changing climate. Grapevine in New Zealand is grown from clones, and that means that there's not much genetic diversity. And so anything that affects one plant can affect all of them. One of the major research themes at the Brigato Research Institute is trying to build diversity and so genetic resilience into the plants that are available to us in New Zealand. In Grapevine, we have a number of wild relatives and those wild relatives have got very strong resistance genetics, but they're not very good for winemaking. What we can do is look to bring that resistance genetics into the grapevines that we have in New Zealand, which are great for making wine. Breeding is often about choosing the best version of a plant or animal and trying to replicate that but in this case, it's about expanding the diversity of the grape genetics to provide resilience against what may lie ahead. Genomes have within them so-called jumping genes or transposable elements. It's a little stretch of DNA that has all the machinery that it needs to cut itself out of the genome and reinsert itself somewhere else. We're promoting their movement so that they generate new mutations, some of which may be beneficial to the plants. 
We have about 6,000 plants that we are characterising with genomics and looking at how they're behaving. The technologies that are available to us now are phenomenal in terms of how comprehensively we can look at genomes and to keep pace with the changing climate that we're encountering. While we need to act fast to avoid making things worse, the climate is already changing. Andy Allen believes the only way to keep up with the speed of that change is through adopting techniques such as CRISPR. Those changes we can sort of get out there in five years, whereas in a breeding program it might take 35 years. Looking into the future, some of our crops that we grow in New Zealand, I can see that they're part of the solution for the climate crisis. It fixes carbon dioxide, feeds people, it makes the soil better, it produces almost no greenhouse gas emissions. The data that we're seeing from our research gives me a great deal of confidence that we'll be able to provide a genetic toolkit that's going to help the world address some of the food security concerns that we have. Plants can produce food way more efficiently than anything else and if we help them cope with the climate crisis we can use them as a tool to turn back the tide.